So, how have you been this week? Pretty good. Um, you know, trying to keep Peggy from jumping off the second story landing. I saw that. She did it once off like the floor under that railing and landed on the top of the coat rack hanging on the wall and then slammed onto the floor. And I guess that wasn't enough of a learning experience because now she's climbing up on top of that railing and like, I could fuck it. I could do this fucker. So that whole thing where, where they used to say, you know, a, a, a cat will only ever sl- sit on a hot stove once, but it will never sit on a cold stove either. That's bullshit. No. Yeah, because she is all set to do that from three feet higher than the last time. Meanwhile, Dottie just sits there and looks at her like, what is wrong with you? Poor Dottie got locked in Dan's closet for three hours this morning. Yeah, Dan left for work at like 730. I didn't re- Dottie's kind of independent, so she'll wander off and sleep by herself away from everybody. You know, oh. she likes having her space. So Peggy's like chittering and chattering and talking to me and talking to me and headbutting me in the face. And I figure she just wants to play. So I just keep going back to sleep. Finally, like 1030, I'm like, fuck it. This cat is not going to let me sleep. I can't find Dottie. Like, usually once I get up and move around, Dottie comes running. And I'm like, oh, shit. She got locked in Dan's closet when he left for work. And Peggy was trying to wake me up to tell me to please rescue her sister for three hours. But I'm a failure as a cat mom. Well, did she poop in the closet? No. Well, okay, then. Everything's fine. I just feel bad. I gave them... We have little... Uh, air sealed packets of salmon that we give them as treats that I gave them a couple of to apologize <sighs> for the pain and suffering. Meanwhile, I have this floppy, ridiculous thing. Look at the floof. Hello, floof. You are the king of floof. He's purring up a storm. Have we pooped ourselves lately? No, thank God. Good job not pooping yourself. <sighs> Do you want to get put down now? Is that, is it... This is not the most comfortable position, is all I'm saying. Is that is that something a cat even really cares? Have you seen how they sleep? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you for your butthole, Grady. That was very kind of you. That's actually a sign of respect. If a cat, like, shoves their butt up in your face, they usually do that to their mother so that their mother can inspect their butt to see if it's clean enough or something. So that is actually a show of admiration and respect. So being the giant sucker I am, I usually thank my cats for showing me their butt. Because that's them being nice. And then I move their butt out of my face. (sighs) They're horrible little monsters. Okay. They're wonderful little monsters. (sighs) So... We have the usual assortment of nonsense and what the fuckery tonight. We get our intro here. Let's go ahead and play that right now. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And <sighs> okay, th- th- we'll start with the first. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on this one, but it's just one of those things that happen. You know, I am an atheist. I don't believe there is a God. But then shit like this happens, and I have to sit and go. Things that make you go, hmm. This comes to us from Iowa. Derailed train crashes into train crashes into bar named Derailed. Police say a freight train that derailed in northern Iowa, Iowa rolled into and damaged a trackside tavern called Derailed. I mean, please say the accident happened around 4 a.m. It says it appears the track separated and the grain car tipped about 45 degrees in the back of the bar. Please say um, 
Uh, and as I said, a, a troll officer called him to say a train car had derailed into derailed, adding that it's not every day you get to say that. And we have a picture down there. No one was injured. Our es owner estimates the damage at $10,000. I mean, I do believe in God, and I am going to say this isn't so much divine intervention as self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> you put your bar right next to the train, train tracks and you na named it derailed. Now, if somebody on the train was watching the shitty Jennifer Aniston, Clive Owen drama derailed when this <laughs> happened, then I might make an argument for some sort of hand of God shit. But this, I think, is just asking for trouble so you're, you're taking the 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 serendipity the yeah synchronicity I think, all things i think this is more inevitability uh <sighs> it, it's still funny it's it's just like you gotta be the guy owning the bar he's just like well kind of asked for that didn't i kind of had to see that coming I had to see that. um Kitten. Our first story this week, I, I didn't know whether to put this on the tech show or to put this on this show. It's not a problem you have very often. Yeah, we, we do a tech Q&A, me and the producer Mike, every two weeks. And, and normally I cover stories like this. But then it's also on this. We talk often about something called the Internet of Things. Which is a very stupid term for taking everyday objects and wiring them up to the internet. My sister just got a Wi-Fi fridge that, like, she can use an app on her phone to make a bottle for my niece downstairs while she's still upstairs. And I'm like, I don't feel like you really need that. And, and you know what she's done? She's opened her house up to be hacked. Yeah. Because if it's on your network... It can get in any other any other device that's on your network, and the security on those things is awful. And the reason I bring up the security on those things is awful is, speaking of shit that did not need to be on the internet, the internet of dildos is watching you. Increasingly banal devices come online as the uh, as increasingly banal devices come online as the latest addition to the Internet of Things. It was inevitable that sex toys would get added to the mix. To the mix, known as teledildonics, that is a fabulous word. That's a great word. The that, realm that's our title. Teledildonics. The realm of internet connected sex toys has been heralded as the future of sex for years now. No, it isn't. As with all internet connect devices, these toys are liable to get hacked. Um, two hackers from New, New Zealand, New Zealand, New Zealand, uh, were at the DEF CON convention recently, and they showed that you can indeed hack the WeVibe 4 Plus, one of the most popular internet connected dildos in the market. What the duo found was surprising. Not only is the device streaming temperature data back to the manufacturer once per minute, it's also streaming the intensity settings of the device in real time. So, let's start off with the fact that the company who makes this has a computer server set up to take your temperature and to know how hard you're getting fucked by their device. Yeah, that's concerning. You have to have an account to use their service. So this is all tied to your account. They're keeping track of how much you're using the dildo. That's the kind of thing that would have to be in the terms of service. And you know what else is probably in that terms of service? Mandatory arbitration. Which means... Which means the company decides that a instead of going to court by agreeing to their terms of service, if you have a dispute with them, you can't go to a judge and a jury and all that. You have to go to third-party arbitration, which is a special company that's set up to mediate disputes. And who hires that company? Why the people you have the dispute with? I'm just saying, I mean, when's the last time you actually read the terms of service on an app you downloaded or a thing? Nobody reads those. Nobody. You figure it's pretty boilerplate. Like, nobody reads those. So you 
buy this thing, you download the app, say you're in a long distance relationship and you know, this is what you do. You don't know what you've agreed to. You don't know that you've agreed to give them all kinds of data regarding your personals. And the thing is like temperature, if that's tracked regularly enough, can tell you when a woman is ovulating. So that's giving them some pretty... Why do they want this data? Yeah, like, why do they need... I guess they could argue that they want to know how often and how rigorously people are using their device for future model upgrades. But no. And also the fact that it was hacked, which means someone else could, in theory, not only intercept this data, but play with your device. Right, because the way it works is you use the app to control the other person's toy. Right. So someone else could be controlled. Man, you'd be in the middle of the night in your desk drawer in your <laughs> nightstand. <laughs> yeah. Just just starts randomly when you don't want it, it starts going. And that really vengeful ex who happens to know when you have a date. Or even worse, th this. Fair, if your date can't handle the fact that you have a vibrator, DTMFA. Like, if your date finds out you have a vibrator and is horrified, show him the door immediately. You're better off with the vibrator. Hey, here's where this is. This is just. Conversely, if your date can't handle you have a flashlight, show her the door. You're better off with the flashlight. This is going to be one of those potential law headaches because there's no law to cover this. Wrap your head around this. This could could potentially constitute unwanted sexual contact if yeah. someone hacks the device while you are using it. God, you can rape somebody from 3,000 miles away now. We have no law to cover this. <sighs> How creepy is this? You don't need your fuck. I understand it's kind of shitty, the long distance thing, but they hacked this thing so fucking easy. You don't need yeah, a dildo. I get, the, I get the appeal of the product, I do. You don't need. Like, you need that to be pretty fucking secure. And they're not, because th th that's how all these internet things of things devices are. The security is an afterthought. Marketing is the primary thing. So right. all the, the interface software and hardware for it is so dirt cheap because they want to sell it, make it quick, and then move on to the next thing. The security on these things is fucking laughable. And we're in an age where we can make technology do so much so fast with that we don't really have time to contemplate the consequences or the fallout or the potential weird problems like this that could arise from that. You don't need a fucking... Don't put your dildo on the internet! You don't need it! Not this way! Let's move on to, oddly enough, Jerusalem or Israel. This, okay. I mean, from one promised land to another. Have you all, have you ever seen those movies where the a criminal gets rid of their fingerprints and like hack them off or burn them off or something and then they can't be tracked? That happened to me for like two weeks when I was a kid because I electrocuted myself on a sun lamp and I burned off all my fingerprints. They grew, they, they grew back. So my career as a master criminal was short lived. It's not. Uh, oh, this guy. This fucking guy. It, it's not exactly a master plan. Biker slices off his fingertips to avoid being ID'd. Now, now look real closely there at what he's done. Oh. Oh, honey. He hasn't exactly gone the, the whole way with this. He hasn't gone. Which a I can understand because that's going to be painful and a considerable amount of blood because fingers bleed like a motherfucker. He hasn't gone the full smoke and aces on this one. He's He's gone a bit more hot topic with it. 
Yeah, that's not gonna that's not gonna help you. That's not gonna help you. Because you can't just, like, take off one or two layers of like skin. what you've got there is your average diabetic who has to punch their finger a few times a day to test their blood sugar. That's and what you've got. Here's why. An Israeli biker with a long history of traffic violations tried to cut off his fingertips in order to avoid edification when he was pulled over last week. In addition to slicing off the tops of his fingers, the man, age 21, provided officers with a counterfeit driver's license when he was pulled over speeding. Despite his best efforts, police succeeded, succeeded in identifying the man who was driving on a license that had been suspended for his involvement in a past hit and run. For traffic violations! What did you do? Like, how bad are your tickets to warrant this? I mean, it's... Traffic tickets. Oh, God, I've got to disappear. I got to get out of the system. Also, I feel like all you've done now is identify yourself as the guy with no fingerprints, I mean, which you haven't, actually, because you, you still haven't. have fingerprints. They're quite clear and can be taken easily. I can imagine somebody doing this shit like, you know, if they're international assassin yeah. or terrorist or bank robber. Traffic tickets. Oh, shit. This is overkill to get out of a ticket, for sure. And it didn't even work. Because he's just sort of like, I'll just take... Well, it hurts real bad. I'll just take off little bits of it. No. And that would hurt. Like, I remember there, there's somewhere on the internet, there's a model of a human. If the size of the body part equaled the number of nerve endings in it. Did I say that in a way that makes sense? Yes. The fingers were huge. Just because the fingers, was, huh? Well, it was not anatomically correct in that way. But, and you think about where you, we use your hands for everything, so that makes sense. You have a lot of little nerve endings in there. Yeah. And a lot of little capillaries and blood vessels. And Number one, if you're going to do this, you are committed to sparkle motion, my friend. This, this is... you're not, because you went... Yeah, this is one of those things, if you want it to work... You're going to have to, it's going to hurt. Yeah. And you better be doing it for a damn good reason. You fucked up on both. You idiot. Yeah, traffic tickets, uh, that's that's overkill. And now you're sitting in jail and all the other prisoners are looking at you like, what did you do? I cut off my fingerprints, man. I'm hardcore. To avoid detection. Well, that worked out, didn't it? Hey, you know what? I want you to write damaged across my forehead. Yeah. You know, they yeah. didn't specify in that movie that he had no fingerprints. <laughs> and I'm pretty uh, sure all his clothes were not custom made. That's because he was barely in the fucking movie. Anyway. This next story is one that I cannot believe this happened in Canada. This I was just in Canada a few weeks ago. It's a wonderful place. I, I often tell people... People ask me, they've never been to Canada, say, what's Canada like? I say, it's a lot like America, only it's polite and clean. That sounds like utopia. It is. It's really nice there. Even, it, this is hilarious. We're, like their prime minister is like the nicest dude alive. Who he's can't. Pandas and helping people carry strollers downstairs. He's and, like Captain Kirk that can't keep a shirt on him. And yeah, but he's like rescuing kittens out of trees and shit. Like all while being really pretty. So that's why I cannot believe this story came from Canada. This just does not seem like something that Canadians do. And yet, police alerted after Brockville, Ontario neighbors fling dog feces at each other. Oh. The dispute between new two neighbors in Brockville, Ontario turned stinky last week. That was the best you had? Who wrote this? CBC News. No one wants to take credit. That's the turn stinky last week when two women began hurling dog feces at each other. Uh, officers with the Brockville Police Service were called to a pair of homes in the east central part of the city. One of the women was picking up dog feces from her yard and throwing it into her neighbor's yard. As she believed it was her neighbor's pet who was responsible for the mess. The neighbor responded by picking up the feces, the flung feces, and throwing handfuls back at the first woman. The dispute turned physical 
So two neighbors grabbed hold of each other. Ew! In case you forgot that we are evolved from monkeys. Wait. You've just been throwing dog poop at each other. Oh, now you're going to get in a fight? Now you're going to grapple? Oh, God, it's so nasty. Like, I'm sure it's frustrating if you have a yard full of dog poop and no dog. I'm sure that's really infuriating. I'm sure that it is. This is not the way to deal with that. I, 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 fuck, even if it was, even if some strange mirror universe where it was, couldn't you get a shovel? Did you have to pick up the dog shit with your it hands? Looks like a dog poop trebuchet? Yeah. <laughs> Let's be civilized about this. See, now you say that, and I'm thinking, you know, I probably could go down to Home Depot and pick up some PVC. And yeah, I, I could, I'd some, yeah, that wouldn't be that hard. For when I was living with my sister, my nephew Pat built a little cat treat trebuchet. Two cat treats down the hallway, and the cat would Bridget would run after them. It, they had great fun. But it's I imagine you could just upsize it for dog poop. It, it what kind of dispute of any kind would make you think? Okay, the obvious solution here is to put my hands in poop. There are very few problems that that will solve. I have never. You couldn't pay me to physically handle dog poop. I mean, we. Because the kittens were so young when we brought them home, we had to bring stool samples back to the mm -hmm. shelter when we brought them in for a checkup. I made Dan do it. I, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not fucking around with cat poop. Like, that's all you. That's, well, that's kind of, that hey, was enough for me. And hey. I don't, I, I love, I love dogs. But one of the reasons I don't have dogs is I don't want to have to get up at 530 in the morning, walk it around and then pick up its poop. Like. I mean, th this this little guy, he shits in a box under right. dirt, and I still don't want to have fuck to do with it, but I have to. Yeah. But I don't touch it with my hands. No, you touch it with a scoop. I mean, to, to, and, then, and then after you've gotten poop on your hands, now you're getting poop on them, they're getting poop on you, and you got to imagine the, the Canadian police are going like, oh, shit. Yeah. What, what, oh, okay then, uh, so, uh, yeah. you picked up the poop in your, your yardie, and, uh, then you, uh, you threw it, you threw it in the other yardie. Uh, Please, okay. that crap night, eh? Oh, yeah, yeah, crap, oh, yeah, yeah, they had a crappy night, eh? Oh, that's a good one. Uh, say, you want to go get Tim Hortons after this? Because, uh, ah. yeah, get some Timbits, that'd, that'd be great. Yeah. Oh, hi, Grady. Hi, Grady, what you doing? Peggy and Dottie are quite contrarily sitting on their old tower out of the shot. <laughs> given, given me the butt. You gotta put catnip on the new tower to get them to go on it. You're not gonna exploit us tonight, but Peggy, there's this little basket thing. Uh-huh. Peggy, Peggy was sleeping in this all night. Well, you have to get rid of the old tower because they've been rubbing all, all fucking night. Yeah, they've rubbed all over the old tower and they've got their stink on it. And that's what they, so you have to it's get not that. They've been using it all day and all night. It's just when I dragged it over here and went, it's time to be exploited. They were like, no, fuck you. <laughs> you get the butt. Do you have like a retracting basket on that thing? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little kitten basket <laughs> that you can swivel around. And there's a hammock in the bottom. There's a fancy rope they can play with. It's like, six feet tall this is this is a quality model and they like it they just they they don't feel like being on the internet today i guess they're being divas wait what stop it nothing oh he's being a little shit oh so grady can you hear that no is he singing you the song of his people? No, he's scratching on his, his little cardboard scratcher. Oh, that I can hear. I thought I was listening for meowing. No. Grady, stop. Knock it off. Right now, really, is now when you need to do that? Yes, it's very important. Come, come here. No, I gotta scratch on my thing right now. Grady, come here. Nash, what you fail to understand is that cats have a very <sighs> strict schedule. Treats, Grady. Treats. <laughs> Treats, there you go. There you go. Now he's scratching on the thingy time. Come here, eat these, and stay the fuck away from the other thing. 
How many treats is it worth to you? Anyway. You guys don't want to come over here? You're just going to give me the butt? All right. What do you want? What do you want? Come here. Come here. Come here. Meanwhile, while I was getting my makeup done to get on camera, I'm, I'm, I'm like halfway through my liquid eyeliner and Dottie literally scales my back. Because she doesn't fuck around when she wants attention. So I, I managed to not fuck up my eyeliner with little tiny claws climbing my back. And now she's like, no, fuck you. I don't, I don't, I don't need attention. So our next one is we got video. Yay. Most days we've been hearing about texting while driving. We've been hearing about Pokemon while driving. This is almost Thanks. this is almost quaint, yet awful. Uh, let me find the video here so we have it all queued up. Yes, yes, yes. He's hiding. Look at this. He's hiding in my arm. No. Uh, yeah, this Why'd you exploit me? Because you're a cat. That, you're a cat. You're on the internet. That's what you were made for. Shush. We got, did ya? Let me send you the story here and let everybody see what happened. So what you're watching right now is a woman driving. This is England, so the, the steering wheel's on the other side. Woman driving while reading the Bible and flicking off people, videotaping her reading the Bible while driving. Huh. So not only is this incredibly fucking dangerous. You're also an asshole. Yep. Brazen woman appears to stick her middle finger up at an overtaking driver, filming her reading a book. This is the shocking moment a driver used her steering wheel to prop up what appeared to be a copy of the Bible on the motorway. To make matters worse, she then appears to stick her middle finger up at an overtaking car filming her. So if she's holding the book with one hand and uh -huh. flipping someone off with the other, uh -huh. is she hoping Jesus took the wheel? What is she driving? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, lady, Jesus, really? Okay, so... How many... Why are you reading while you're driving? Don't do that. Why are you reading a physical book while you're driving? Audiobook. And they make the... God damn, there must be so many versions of the Bible on audiobook. Yeah. Has Morgan Freeman gotten around to that shit yet? Because... I mean, clearly, you're not absorbing much anyway. No, you're, you're not. You're not reading it very closely. Yeah, you, 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 you've completely, if you were scramming for the test, lady, you failed. Yeah. Because. I guess technically, Jesus never said, thou shalt not show thine middle finger to thine other driver. But there's letter of the law and there's spirit of the law. And the spirit of the law does not include you. Why are you fucking doing, you Don't fucking do idiot? Pay attention to the road. Didn't we, a few weeks ago, we had someone who closed her eyes to pray while driving. Yep. Don't do that either. Don't do that either. God will understand that you need to pay attention to the road. You can pull the fuck, it, the Bible's gonna be there. It's been it's here. It's been here for what, 2,000 years now? It's going to be around a little bit longer. No, it's been longer it'll, than 2,000 years. It'll be there in half an hour when you get back from the Piggly Wiggly. I promise. We've had, we've had the Bible for... It's, they don't have Piggly Wiggly in England. They have Costco. Tesco. Tesco, yeah, that's it. No, Costco's the one we have here. Tesco's the one they have there. Tesco... if you. Tesco is kind of sad. Tesco desperately wants to be Walmart, but it just can't quite get it. Why would you want to be Walmart? I don't know. They're trying. They're not doing a very good job at it, but they're trying. 
Tesco desperately wants to be Walmart. But regardless, you just, you, <laughs> look, if you get into a car accident, you're not going to get like points off because no. you, you, you'd smash the fuck out of this car. Yeah, but I was reading the Bible. Oh, okay. You're fine. Oh, then. okay. No, that's not how that works. Killed three people, but I was reading the Bible. Oh, okay. You're fine. You're fine. It's Apparently, I was looking, I was walking through the mall where I worked the other day, and they had this table set up. Every now and then, the various religions in the area rent out a table in the mall. There's the Jehovah's Witnesses, whatever. Whatever church was there this day had, are you going to heaven? Take our two-question test and find out. So apparently, the trick to getting to heaven is just being answer, able to answer two questions properly. I don't know what those questions are. They were also advertising a free candy bar. So I guess if you don't get into heaven, that's your consolation prize. What if one of the questions is, would you like a free candy bar? I don't know, because does Jesus want you to take candy from strangers? Or <laughs> Jesus sending some mixed messages there. Yeah, the, the free candy bar is what cracked me up because I'm like, I guess heaven isn't enough of a draw these days. <laughs> no, I guess I guess. An afterlife of serenity and joy. No. This isn't enough. You gotta have an almond joy, too. Oh, really? You just... No. No. Oh, God. I just... Oh, God. It's Chattanooga. It's the Waffle House. It's naked. It's... Is is? Oh, I, I didn't even send you that last story. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's why I assumed there was a Piggly Wiggly. I think. Uh, well, here is this uh, uh, nude couple busted in front of Hickson Waffle House with more than just their clothes off. More. Called a Chattanooga police about an indecent exposure lands two people in jail with multiple drug charges. Melissa Worley, 28, and Coey Waller, 39, are both facing multiple drug charges and a charge of indecent exposure. Wait, Coey is from somewhere called Soddy Daisy. Soddy Daisy, Tennessee. Is that, is that a place? Soddy Daisy, Tennessee. Are there people that live in a town called Soddy Daisy? I, I guess so. I mean, of course you're going to wind up naked and doing drugs at the Waffle House if you live in Soddy Daisy. That's the saddest name I've ever heard. According to Chattanooga police, it happened Friday night in front of the Hickson Waffle House. An officer was called to the scene after someone reported indecent activity in the parking lot located directly in front of the restaurant. So to start with, they're fucking in the car right in front of the, the Waffle House window. So it's like dinner and a show that you really didn't want. I don't think that's what, what do, what do they say about the hash browns? Smattered, scattered, uh, smothered. smothered. Loaded. Yeah. <laughs> up, flip it, rub it down, oh no. No. This is, I don't think that's what they mean. So this is, this is sort of like being stuck on an airplane with nothing but Adam Sandler films. Ugh. When the officer arrived, he walked up to Worley and Wall Waller, who were reportedly nude engaging in sex acts. When the officer searched the car, he found unmarked pill bottles filled with Xanax, Alprazolam, what is that? And Oxymorphone. <laughs> Hi, Grady. Hi, Grady. Grady's like, the kittens are fucking off. I got, I got to pick up the slack. So... You, you you have Oxy, you have Xanax, you're naked, and you're fucking in the parking lot of a Waffle House. Think about your life. <laughs> you, you know when you go in for a job interview, they say, where do you want to, where do you see yourself in five years? <laughs> this is never the right answer to that. This question. is never the right answer. Job interviewer, no. If anybody asks you where you see yourself in five years, naked, fucking on drugs in the Waffle House parking lot is never the right answer unless you're trying out for, like, 
some sad redneck reality show. <laughs> I mean, it... Uh, why there, of all places? I'm I, guessing so that they, they figured they'd do all the drugs, <laughs> they'd fuck, and then when they're hungry, they're all the drugs and fuck. <laughs> They're in the right place. <laughs> That's my best guess. See, I mean, yeah. and while you get points for efficiency, uh, maybe just make some French bread pizzas at home. Why not park behind the Waffle House where there's not windows? Because that's the problem. <laughs> you parked on the wrong side. <laughs> to have a naked drug orgy. <laughs> that's the real problem. Well, nobody would have called the police. Who wants to have a naked Waffle House drug orgy next to a dumpster? That's not sexy. <laughs> Uh, well, our last... Alprazolam is generic for Xanax. Uh, so he had Xanax and generic Xanax, so... What are you doing? Silly cat. Really important cat stuff. Don't worry about it. So our last story tonight is... Okay. We've had many stories about Walmart. We've had many stories about meth. We have had many stories about meth and Walmart. This is, God damn it, cat. <laughs> Are you quite finished? No. I'm building something. He I'm build I'm building up something. Come on, man, work with me. I know, I'm fucking it up. This, ladies and gentlemen. We this is the peak. We we are never going to have a story that tops this one. There there's no there. Th this is it. Underground meth lab found in Walmart parking lot. Oh, Amherst, New York. A possible underground meth lab was discovered under a Walmart parking lot in New York. As Walmart shoppers ran their errands, two first responders in full hazmat suits were lowered beneath the parking lot through a manhole. Uh, officers found the evidence in a culvert that runs below the parking lot. They say it's tall enough to stand up in. It was not secured, so anyone could access it. Huh. So what they did was... They built... A meth lab, a full fucking breaking, but not one of those shake and bake in a bottles. They went all Walter White in the sewer underneath the Walmart parking lot. That has got to be like a white trash gold medal. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if the people who did this were white. I'll probably get lots of angry comments for assuming that. Uh, but like, that is, that is, that is peak redneck right there. That is, that is some industrious motherfuckers. I'll be I'm damned. hoping it's a storm drain and not a sewer. Because meth, as I understand it, is quite explosive in the process <laughs> of making it. I don't think you can make that any worse, really. I'm just saying. So it, and on top of this, as people were go, they didn't close the Walmart. As people were going in and out of their shopping experience. You can't close the Walmart. They're passing by two guys in the fucking, you remember that scene in E.T.? We're all the, the fucking federal agents, the goddamn fucking mask and shit. There are two guys like that going down in the sewer for well, all. Customers don't give a fuck. <laughs> we had to, when I was working at Sephora years and years ago, the fire alarm went off in the mall and it would happen. It happened. So yeah. we'd always call security and be like, is it just a false alarm? 
Well, this one time they were like, no, we're evacuating the mall. There's a problem. Okay. So we start telling customers they have to leave. We're evacuating the mall. I swear to you, people are like, but I just need a few things. No, I'll just be a minute. Or like, well, I don't want to lose my place in line. Can you, can't you just ring me out? And we're like, shit's on fire. The mall is potentially on fire. You can't just you say can potentially. You get your fucking lipstick tomorrow. And people wouldn't leave. The mall. We're like, no, no, no. I just need, or like we, we tell them we have to evacuate the mall. Okay. But I'm looking for a new moisturizer. You're, you're going to be, be <laughs> when your face burns off, you're going to be looking for a really goddamn good moisturizer. Get out of the mall. Get the, so they're passing by this stuff going, no one is put, well, yeah, there could be like aliens in the sewer and shit, but I really need a flat screen. Customers don't give a single chicken fry. <laughs> Not one fuck. Not one fuck was had. We got a complaint on our survey where I work now that my manager closed the store because the power was out. And they were upset about this. Yep. You know what? Fuck them. Let them breathe the meth fumes. Jesus Christ. They don't care. Yeah, yeah. Mall, on fi- mall potentially on fire. I can imagine the cops saying, look, we have to close the Walmart. There's a health threat. No. There'd be a riot. What do you mean, no? I mean, if we close the Walmart, meth would be the least of your fucking worries. We can't close exactly. the Walmart. These doors don't Especially close. if it was a weekend. Yeah, no. I guess the... the- the first thing we learned this week is you 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 can't close a Walmart. Nope. Not not for nothing. There's gonna be a nu- don't give a fuck. There's gonna be a nuclear goddamn apocalypse, and they're still gonna be like, why ain't the Walmart open? Yep. I need me some some fucking frappuccinos. On the last day of this world, Macy's will be open. And they will be having a one-day sale. And that motherfucker will be packed. We've learned that it... it you should really take that where do you see yourself in five years question out of the job interview area and just apply it to life in general. In general. Yeah. that that's, that's one of those good little philosophies. Where do you see yourself in five years? You should not see yourself drugged and fucking yeah try not to be reading any chuck palonic when you think about that question either. <laughs> oh no i got the pixie stuck in my head we've learned that if you crash into something while driving and reading the bible you don't get points on that nope it's it's you don't get points off on that no nope, you still suck we've learned that even in canada people will be fucking awful We've learned that if you have some traffic violations, maybe trying to saw off your fingerprints is going a little too far. Overkill. Just pay your ticket. I mean, I know that's that's kind of a privileged thing to say. Maybe you can't afford to pay your ticket. And that's terrible. But but I feel like there's a solution that doesn't involve self-mutilation. And finally, we've learned we are in a... This, we're in a future where someone on the internet can hack your dildo. This is the stupidest possible cyberpunk dystopia. I demand a refund. God, isn't that terrible? Like, wow. I thought we would have like shadow runs. I thought we would have like, you know, fucking computer decks and a VR internet. No, we have internet dildos getting hacked. Or at least this like, is Hunger games. This is bullshit. Neuromancer. The Matrix. I guess it's kind of the Matrix. This, I, this is, this is bullshit. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Man, Ghost in the Shell was way off. Yes. 